check, check. Okay, great. Let's get started. So uh, welcome everyone to Open Education Week 2019 here in the Ontario post-secondary education uh, context. Open Education Week is a global celebration of the open educational movement. And uh, it's an initiative that started with the Open Education Consortium, which is a nonprofit uh, global and members-based network of uh, open education initiatives and organizations. And this week is meant to raise awareness about open education work and its impact on teaching and learning. So each day of Open Ed Week, uh, our eCampus Ontario is offering 50-minute webinars that members can access on their own devices or stream live at, at their institutions to share the good, uh, the good news of the work that we're doing in uh, this OER landscape. So today I am absolutely honored to uh, be moderating a session uh, with a faculty focus. And so this session today is gonna feature the innovative work of colleges and university uh, faculty who use and adapt OER in their teaching and learning. Um, today, I would, would like to introduce you to Carrie Shields, Professor and Program Coordinator at Centennial College. There she is waving, Jennifer Lampham, uh, Professor at Ryerson University. Daphne, uh, the Daphne Cockrell School of Nursing, and then last but not least, David Simon, Program Pathways and E-Learning Coordinator, Project Lead uh, of Learning and the, the Learning Innovation Center at Lambton College. <laughs> That's a lot of L's. It's a lot of alliteration, David. So uh, without further ado, I would like to uh, invite Carrie to step up to the microphone and uh, we'll have the three of these uh, lovely individuals give their presentations in order and then we'll move to the question and answer uh, portion of our webinar today. Thanks, Carrie. Thank you, Alain. Um, sure, so I'm from Centennial College and Alain's just getting my slide up there, there we go. Um, Something that happened here in 2016, um, I've, I'm the business coordinator, I should say that. I coordinate the business administration leadership and management program, three programs in the management stream actually. And uh, students often tell us, you know, that the price of textbooks is too high, that the price of tuition is too high, that they can't afford, you know, all of the fees that come along with being a full-time student at college so we have a large percentage here at Centennial College of international students and especially it's expensive for them to come to the college um, we were looking for ways to reduce costs and I heard from you know I started thinking about the books and in 2016 I think it was about three years ago I stumbled across some OER information online and some of the places that I first sort of um, started looking at was Educause and BC Campus and BC Campus um, has a lot of OER resources um, and I think was sort of the precursor to eCampus Ontario and eCampus Ontario came after that um, so I didn't know about eCampus Ontario three years ago I don't think it was um, fully developed yet so um, one of the courses that we have that runs across our our business school is BUSN 119 which is a business fundamentals course and business students we have about a thousand business students who take that each year and I got thinking it might be a nice idea to use a free book in that course because it's an overview course or you know an introductory course where students learn about the various functional parts of a business and later they take a more specific course in that area so students will take an HR course an accounting course um, you know other functional areas they'll take these other courses later in their program and they'll have to buy a book for each of those courses so then I thought well do we can we not do something better than in the foundation course maybe use something free for students and save them some money and we did so as I did my search online and started finding all of these interesting articles and interesting sort of support websites and resources online I brought it to the attention of my chairperson and she said sure go ahead you can modify the course we could try this so again I spent a little time at Creative Commons I've got the sort of the logos there down the side of the slide and the OER Commons um, what I stumbled across three years ago was this website for Lumen Learning and I found there's a lot of open educational resources out there and a lot of um, providers but and as time goes forward the quality of these um, resources are improving all the time 
And so when I stumbled across Lumen Learning, I noticed they had a fundamentals book and I opened it and tried it and it had quizzes at the end of every chapter sort of embedded in the book. And it had some interactive components in the chapters that I liked, such as, for example, in the economics chapter, they have a little game that pops up in their online book for students, and it's to run the lemonade stand, if you've ever heard of the lemonade stand, um, and it teaches students about supply and demand and ordering inventory and the price pricing and things like that. And so I thought, this would be great. This is free. I can put it into the course, and so I did. And that's how our OER um, you know, sort of initiation started here at uh, the business school in at Centennial. And that was a course that we have embedded OER in. So we are saving a thousand students per year. Um, they used to buy a book that was $125. So a thousand students saved $125. That's $125,000 a year that students are not paying any longer. Um, and then eCampus came along, and so I did some searching at eCampus as well since that time, and they have a really good business fundamentals book as well. Not that I'm pitching eCampus, but it is a really good book. And uh, I did a review of that book, and they also have um, a Canadian version of it now, so I'm actually considering those as possible adoptions. But currently, I'm using the one from Lumen Learning in that course. So maybe we can go to the next slide, Len. So some of the things that we had to consider, you know, as we got going, decided to revise the course, there are three other professors that actually teach that course with me. And um, so I consulted with each of them and sort of laid out the plan. Hey, what do you think if we use this free book? And one of the teachers was like, oh, yeah, that's great. It's going to save students money. Um, so there were other issues that came up, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but what I would like to point out here is, you know, because this was all new to us, we didn't understand the licensing either and how we could use these things. So some of the things that we were looking at, for example, some EOR websites like Lumen Learning, they actually have courses. And some of the courses are open or free. Um, and some of the courses you can pay minimal fees for, like $10 per student, and that gives the teacher some instructor materials. So one of the other colleagues that teaches this course with me said, well, what instructor materials will we get? Is there, are there PowerPoints? Is there a test bank? And they were concerned with that. And understandably so, because that's very time consuming to create those things for faculty. Um, so, you know, looking at were we going to adopt a course, were we going to pay a minimal fee for a course, were we going to just get the ebook? And if we just had the ebook, we also consider is there a print option for these ebooks? Because um, in our in my experience, I've been a professor 20 years here at Centennial College. College, sometimes certain students, and I don't want to just say uh, disability students, but it has been in my experience that disability students will ask for a print copy because that works better for them. And so that's part of our sort of, um, you know, vetting process is can I get the ebook, but can I also get a print book? And that's one thing I noticed with eCampus Ontario, you can order print books at a very minimal cost. Um, and I've done that to review the business fundamentals. I have the print book, it's, it's very good. So I'm happy with that. And you know, the final thing was the instructor resources. So those were all things we had to consider um, when looking at Lumen Learning or any of the other um, OER websites that offer these free eBooks or free courses and the licensing. So, um, you know, there's different things at different levels that you can get involved in OER with. And so you can adopt a book, you can adapt a book, and you can create your own book um, under these open copyright licenses. And so far in my journey with OER, I've done adoption and review. I have not done adaption or creation, but our other guest speakers today will probably be talking more about that. Um, what I have was concerned with at the beginning is should we want to adapt a book and use it for our own? You know, what were the, the licensings? What was the rules around that, the guidelines? So I've just put in this slide a little image um, that we can briefly talk about. But if in most of these OER books, they allow you to revise it as much as you want. And usually you can either use it for commercial or non-commercial use. And there's three levels of that. So you can, 
you know, go ahead and change it as much as you want and then relicense it under your name as long as you give credit to the people who have done the work that you've kept in the book, like before that. Or um, the second level would be, you know, there's uh, share and share alike. So you can make changes and you can relicense it, but you have to relicense it under the same licensing that it was licensed under to start with. So you can read more about these licenses. I'm using the non commercial. Um, one right now, of course, but it, because I'm in education, but you could, if you were adopting, adapting, um, you know, pick the license to start with and, and go from there and relicense it and add your own material to these uh, works, which is really great. It's about open, open concept and free. So the licenses are there and um, I think we can go to the next slide. So back to sort of some of the initial resistance. So I went to the manager and mentioned, you know, what about doing this OER for our business fundamentals course? She loved it. We revised the course. We spoke with the other faculty. And some of the initial resistance was that lack of teaching resources. So if it didn't come with PowerPoints and it doesn't come with a test bank, are we going to have to create this all ourselves? How are we going to manage that? Um, that's a lot of work. And what about when we have new professors teaching, et cetera? Um, the other issue that was brought up to me was lack of quality. And this also stemmed around Canadian versions, versions of the book um, compared to U.S. versions or editions of the book. And, you know, what about so currency in the content, in the cases, in the examples and the quality, um, you know, it was skeptical. I think every year these things are getting better and better. So I wasn't that concerned with what I saw. I thought it was of good quality. Currency was a bit of an issue. Some of the examples used in many of these free books I looked at, I think I reviewed about six free books I found from OER places online. Uh, the currency is a bit of an issue because some of them were dated like 2007. But again, it depends what... Um, what that piece of information was. Um, so in some cases, it wasn't so bad. And in other cases, we could supplement. So the way I worked around that initial resistance and the teaching resources and the currency is I spoke to the team and I said, well, I'm happy to go through the book and make PowerPoints for every chapter. So I did. I said, we can then as a group create you know, quizzes around every chapter. We can split it up and create that and we'll have that done. And then every time, every semester, we'll have like a little quiz bank. So we did that ourselves. Um, for currency, what we did is we created a shared sort of um, shell in our learning management system. So we created a course, if you will, a, a format for weeks one to 14, because we have 14 weeks. And under each week, we put in what chapter we were teaching. And then we put links to some Canadian supplemental material around banking or politics. Um, instead of teaching the American, you know, uh, view, we had links. And we put in some links in on some web articles that were more current than what the book had. So there are ways to get around that sort of resistance on those issues. Um, the other thing for eventual acceptance and uh, pride in you know, saving students money and being happy with what we did, I, we, it's important to get your manager's support. So the manager was on board and quickly the word spread and other managers are phoning us, asking us, how we did this and where we started. Um, I've even had other colleges calling me, asking me about this. And, um, you know, having a coordinator or course lead, so I sort of took on, I am the coordinator, I sort of took on the course lead role, which meant I was, you know, given some time to create some of these supplemental materials. And um, that's important. Uh, what I find now is some of these free books, they're coming with supplemental materials. And um, you can sometimes talk to the, uh, the authors um, and sometimes get some of their materials too. They're happy to share them when they put their book out uh, very often for in the OER forum. And just making awareness. So since that time, since 2016, we have had actually eCampus Ontario came into one of our uh, big faculty orientation days, I guess semester startup, and um, did a presentation for us on OER and the eCampus uh, forum. So that's making more and more faculty aware, more managers aware, and then maybe we'll get more uptake and more acceptance of the OER, um, you know, project or process. And that's um, everything I think I need to share today. And 
there's some information um, if you would like to contact me and know more. And thank you for your time and attention. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Carrie. I really appreciate uh, that story, the self-directed uh, research with respect to OERs and licenses and how you're able to parlay that into um, your uh, institution's adoption of the Business Fundamentals textbook and, and that overview of some of the, uh, the services and the, op the, um, the functionality of, of the uh, Open Library. It was a fantastic summary, so thank you so much. We'll now turn to, uh, to David's presentation, and he actually has a video presentation for us. So we're going to stop, stop sharing my screen and start sharing his. David, did you want to give a, uh, an overview of the video before we get started? Yeah, I, sh I, sure, I sure will. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is David Simon, and uh, um, part of my role here at Lambton College is in our e-learning area. And so what I've decided to do today is tell a little bit about my journey, my OER journey, and my uh, talented team in our uh, uh, design house here at Lambton College. We make all kinds of uh, courses and modules, both external and internal colleges and universities and, and industry. And um, we've actually created a, a little short video that talks about my journey and I'm gonna share my screen now and, uh, and show everyone. Hello everyone, my name is Dave and I work at Lambton College in Sarnia, Ontario. Today I would like to tell you about my journey. It's an exciting tale full of adventure and intrigue. My story is a personal one based on my experiences as an Ontario College instructor. To begin this journey, I would like you to think back to a time when you may have attended college or university and picture yourself in class. Now, think about that first research paper that you were asked to produce. How did you find this information? Ah, yes, textbooks. We all remember those. In fact, how much do you remember this? After purchasing your textbooks, some of you may have immediately thought, is this going to max out my new student credit card limit? Or will I be able to pay this month's rent? Or, well, I guess it's going to be Raymond noodles for dinner. The college experience shouldn't all be about the cost. And this is where I now begin to share with you more about my open educational resource, OER Journey. Fast forward to fall 2016. I'm in the class right after my professional selling class students have written their first test for me and have received their grades. As we begin class that day, our first objective was to go over the test and have a discussion as to what they thought of the questions. In short order, my students began shouting out exactly which questions they didn't like. One particular question I had asked piqued my interest. It was a question foundational to the course learning outcomes and played an important part in student success in the course. In fact, just as my legendary past professors had done, I had assigned specific readings and exercises to help them with the learning of this particular test question. I stated to the class, I'm not sure why so many of you had a problem with this question. I assigned specific readings and exercises from the textbook to help you learn the material and we even reviewed it in class. From the back row, one female student raised her hand and said, but most of us don't have the textbook. Then I said, well, it is mandatory to have it. So how many of you don't have the textbook? I was shocked to see that almost every student raised their hand. This is where I thought, well, why don't they have the textbook? Then this brought me back to my days as a college student. Cost. After class ended, I did some research and found out that the price of textbooks have increased massively over the past 10 years, 
which was hard to believe as they cost a fortune when I was in college. This really motivated me to look for other ways, new ways, to level the playing field so that all of my students would have the opportunity to have all of the resources needed to be successful in my class. This is where I discovered the exciting world of OERs. I asked around and soon found out that my resource center staff knew a lot about OERs and where I could find instructional tools that meet all of the learning outcomes in my course and could be shared with my class for free. They referred me to da 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 da. I know what you're thinking and the answer is no. It was not eCampus Ontario yet, but it was OER repositories that housed thousands upon thousands of resources I could adopt, adapt, share, or reuse. This is where I found the perfect resource for my class. I liked it so much that I contacted the author to let her know. She was so pleased that an instructor all the way from Canada of all places, she's an American, was using her selling textbook. She sent me additional resources and tools for me to also consider using in my class. And she was interested in seeing what I currently use to teach my class. Not only did I now have a textbook resource that matched and maybe was even a little better than my previous textbook, but I also had new ideas, new supporting resources, and even a new OER friend. Beginning this winter, this OER resource is being used for the first time in three class sections of selling at Lambton College. Just imagine the savings for these students. But this is not the end of this journey. Yes, you guessed it. This is where eCampus Ontario comes in. I connected with the amazing people at eCampus Ontario who provided mentorship, training, and tips as to how I could grow my knowledge and use of OERs. In fact, they not only started helping me, but they began helping others at Lambton College as well as many other Ontario post-secondary schools. Thanks to the amazing team at eCampus Ontario, I was privileged along with other talented Ontario College faculty to have had the opportunity to co-adapt a new OER resource called Communication for Business Professionals, which coincidentally is currently available on the eCampus Ontario Open Textbook Library for your reviewing pleasure. So as I come to an end to this journey, I would ask you to consider thinking about you as an instructor and how you may be able to have your own OER adventure. Think about the positive impact it will have on your students. No more worrying about, did my students actually purchase the textbook? And for me, this is in no way an end. I am only just beginning to tap into the amazing OER resources that are out there just waiting to be discovered. Now, fellow faculty, it's time to discover your OER destiny. David, thank you so much for uh, that video presentation. Uh, I feel like I've had that same legendary past professor. I recognize that guy. <laughs> no, but actually, I mean, you, you, you have some, some, some uh, overlapping and shared reflections on the importance of affordable learning resources for your students. And like with Carrie, you know, look at, uh, trying to look at all of the different um, wealth of resources that are available, uh, what resources and people, to both support your work as an educator as well as your professional learning going forward. So thank you for that. Thank you. All right, so we're moving on to our third presentation. Set you up there, Jennifer. Can you, uh, everything good? Yep, that's perfect, Elaine. Thank you. Wonderful. So welcome and thank you everyone for joining. I'm. Uh, I'm really honored and humbled to follow Carrie and David because they have such expertise and excitement about OERs. And, and what you're going to find is that excitement is contagious as you get as you get involved. So I'm going to shift a little bit and share my story about getting involved in OERs and how I got inspired to adapt and create OERs, particularly in the nursing discipline. But this can apply to any group. Um, so, Eliane, if you can go on to the next slide. 
Um, so this is just the front page of uh, online of a OER that I co-led a team of educators with. And as you can imagine, just from the title, I, it focuses on vital sign measurement. And although this is a topic that's specific to those in a healthcare discipline, um, many of you have probably had your vital signs measured at least once in your life. And so this could be someone taking your pulse, your blood pressure, respirations, temperature, etc. And this is a really important topic that nurses need to learn, and it's where my OER journey really began. So just to give you a little background before I share that journey, I just wanted to share uh, that I'm a professor in the Daphne Cockwell School of Nursing at Ryerson University. And I teach in what's called the Collaborative Program. The Collaborative Program is a collaboration between Ryerson University, Centennial College, and George Brown College. And in our program, it's a nursing degree that students uh, get after their four years, and there's about 500 year one nursing students. It's actually the largest nursing program in Canada. And so, um, so we wanted to create a resource that was going to be helpful for students. And so we'll go on to the next slide here. Um, so where it all started is, um, in terms of vital sign measurement, the existing traditional hard copy textbook that we have for this is generally focused on textual content that students have to read. There's limited incorporation of visual things like images, and there's just no incorporation of acoustic or kinesthetic learning styles because it's not possible with a traditional hard copy textbook. So we got interested in how can we create a textbook of some sort that's going to be more interactive and incorporate a multimodal platform. And that's when we decided we wanted to create an OER. We wanted students to have the ability to engage with it based on their learning style um, and, and be able to facilitate their proficiency in critical thinking and learning when it came to vital sign measurements. Okay, next slide. So where did it all begin for me? Well, first, um, my team of educators we needed to identify a focus for our OER, and we already had a focus. We wanted to do something around vital sign measurements, something to help nursing students and other health-related, other students in health-related programs learn how to take vital signs properly, properly and accurately. So the next step there was to check out what, what existed out there already in terms of OERs. Were there OERs out there already about vital sign measurements? So we started taking a look at the open educational repositories that were referred to earlier. Um, we did look at the BC campus one as well as another one in the States. And we did find two existing OERs about vital sign measurement. Um, they were helpful but they were also problematic because they didn't go into detailed content. So they had a little bit of information that we could draw upon. The second um, limitation was they didn't have much in terms of that interactive component, in terms of that multimodal learning style. So we knew that we wanted to adapt them and use them, but we also knew that we wanted to create some of our own content. So again, our next step was, okay, we know we're gonna need money for this, so we applied for funding and we actually applied for one of the eCampus Ontario grants a couple years ago and we were fortunate to secure funding in this area. Our next step was to build our team even more. And I'm going to stop right there and say, okay, I'm gonna talk about building the team on the next slide, but I wanna talk about a few more things before I do. So after that, we, we had to do the work. We had to adapt the two existing OERs, um, take the content that was relevant from them, and then create the other content that we still needed, or create the learning activities, the videos, the images, whatever it was that we needed. From there, we needed to share and promote it with the Ontario community, but this was also a resource that we knew that was going to be helpful to students in health-related programs throughout the world as well, so we've been sharing very widely. And then the last step was evaluate. So we've actually have a couple of research studies going on right now, evaluating the impact of this particular OER on students' learning experiences. So we'll go on to the next slide. 
So this is why I wanted to say, I'm gonna talk about team in just a moment because team was huge for us. And one of my colleagues said when we were presenting last, it takes a village and it truly takes a village to build a successful and a high quality OER. So in addition to the authorship team that was noted a couple slides ago, and I think one of my um, authorship team members is here, Wendy Garcia, um, but there's also a number of others. Uh, but in addition to that authorship team, we knew, and Wendy will give away about there, <laughs> she just came on for a moment. Um, but it, we also knew more people were needed than just that. And so we wanted to think about who our user was, who was going to use this OER. So we knew that educators were going to use it, and we knew that students were going to use it. And so if those are the two groups that were going to use it, we needed to seek their feedback. We need to seek their input into the design of this OER. So we created two committees, the Faculty Advisory Committee and the Student Advisory Committee. And the Faculty Advisory Committee included educators from across multiple disciplines, such as nursing, medicine, physiotherapy, all the different disciplines that are involved in vital sign measurement during your healthcare experience. And, and also across multiple disciplines, or sorry, multiple institutions. So you can see here, there's some from Ryerson, there's some from Toronto General Hospital, some from Centennial College, George Brown College. Um, and so that was really important as well. And then our student advisory team included students across the three institutional sites, as well as students from each year of the program, so that they can contribute to the design and the content of the book based on how they best learned, how the traditional textbook maybe limited them. Um, and so all of this was really important and they helped us from day one, we had meetings and consulted them. You can also see in the right hand column, we had medical artists um, that drew many of the images throughout the textbook. And we were fortunate enough that we could draw upon many of our students um, who had medical, sorry, had artistic talents as well. So we had Paige Jones and Hilary Tang. And then we had some great Ryerson support. So you'll see a list of individuals there under the Ryerson support. It was, for example, the director of our e-learning at Ryerson, someone specializing in multimedia because we were doing a lot of video components that were integrated, someone who has expertise in instructional design. Our librarians were hugely import, important, particularly in terms of copyright. This is important when it comes to an OER, um, as well as the press books format that we use to put the, the OER into, and an accessibility specialist was important as well. So it truly took a village. Next slide. So um, as we were developing the content and the design of this OER, we needed to think about the underpinnings and the structure of it. And so with, our with um, teaching learning theory, we wanted to use an experiential teaching learning theory to underpin it because we know how important that hands-on experience is to vital sign measurement. We also um, wanted to think about the content and the outcomes. So what content did we want to cover based on what the learning outcomes of the textbook were or that the OER was? In addition, we needed to think about the layout of the whole OER and the layout of each individual chapter. So I think we had about six chapters. It was a small book, um, but I think this is a good thing doing a small book, especially for your first project. So I think it's good to think big, but to start small so you make it something that's doable for your first time around. We also need to consider a platform. So how are we going to get it out there in terms of open access on the internet? And we used um, Pressbooks for this. And I think Pressbooks was an excellent choice for us. I know eCampus uses it. Ryerson University also uses it. And we had, we used it for multiple reasons. First, we had free access to it, which was really important for us. Second, we had great Ryerson support who have people and experts who already knew how to use it and could give us training related to it and we could consult them throughout the process. 
And then lastly was the pedagogical feature. So I'm going to talk about some of the pedagogical features on the next slide. But one thing that we did to structure the OER is we used um, four elements. So it was we wanted um, students to learn, observe, practice and test. So they would learn from reading the textual content as well as the images. They might observe some of the skills being done in an image or by video and then they could practice and they could pause the video and stop it as many times as they like and repeat it again. Try doing blood pressure on a peer while they watch the video and then they could test themselves with all these different interactive activities. Okay, next slide. Um, so yeah, um, one back, Elan, to opening page. Yes, so this is the um, opening page on the left-hand side. And then you're going to see on the right-hand side just a part, a, part, um, a part of our table of contents for, for the first two chapters. So if you take a look at chapter two there, you'll see that it's a very detailed table of contents. And this is really important we found from students, and this is what they told us, is that you know they might want to read the whole OER, but but they also might want to just brush up on something specific. For example, they might go, okay, you know what, I'm really interested in learning more about oral temperature than tympanic or auxiliary temperature or rectal temperature. And so they can actually click on oral temperature and go to straight to that spot in the OER, which is really nice. And they can search certain keywords as well. Next slide. Okay, and so this is our, um, again, we use a multimedia approach to this because we knew we had students had a variety of, variety of learning styles from visual to the acoustic to kinesthetic as well as many others. So images were really important. So you see the image on the left hand side there. This helps them figure out where they actually listen to the heartbeat. Um, and, and again, this is one of our images that was drawn from our, one of our student artists. artists. And then in the middle, you're, uh, this um, shows you an acoustic component. So they, all they had to do was click on this video and they could hear blood pressure. So they could hear what it sounds like and what they're supposed to be hearing. It also acts as a test. So they can um, um, press this play button, listen to what the blood pressure is, and then guess or uh, estimated guess of what they think it is. And then on the right hand side, you're also going to see a video component where they can just click play. They want, in this case, they're watching blood pressure being taken and then they can just pause it as many times as they like to be able to repeat it. We'll go on to the next slide. Um, here's some other pedagogical features. So we had both points of consideration and technique tips interwoven throughout the various chapters and this really pulled out some of our key content and with color coordinating these was really important. We also had things like tables as you see in the right column or diagrams. These are all different pedagogical features that we integrated into the chapters. And next slide. And so finally, just some lessons that we learned. Um, so think, what I would say is think about uptake early because knowing where this OER, what course this was going to get integrated into was important to get buy-in from the instructors that teach that course. And many instructors that teach the course that we integrated in were actually on our faculty advisory committee. So that was really helpful. Collaboration and team is so essential. Again, it goes back to that it takes a village to build a successful quality OER. I can't emphasize this enough, but I know I did emphasize it earlier, so that's probably sufficient for today. Accessibility is really important. So we know that students have various learning styles and learning needs, and some have learning disabilities. So it was important for us to think about that in terms of um, how we describe images, the alt text, for an image, the amount of color that we use in terms of text, whether you use italics or not, that sort of thing. All that was purposefully decided. Um, design was really important. So in terms of design, um, students really appreciate the detailed table of contents, being able to search for keywords and going to that section of content. This made it easier for them to navigate the OER. Also having a consistent structure from one chapter to the next so that they knew what to expect as they went through each of the, each of the chapters and the OERs. 
They also loved that we bold in key words or bold and difficult unfamiliar words. And as you can imagine in healthcare, there's a lot of unfamiliar words when you're entering year one of a nursing program. Uh, the other thing that's really important that we learned in designing this OER is the importance of having short pages and short paragraphs. And so this is important because students find that they, if it's a long page or a long paragraph, they get lost quickly. And so then it doesn't, it kind of all mashes together and it doesn't make sense anymore. So short paragraphs, short pages. Um, and then uh, interweaving within the textual content, things that are gonna pull it out, the content out, the key content. So this could be the use of tables, diagrams, bolding keywords, pictures, videos, whatever might help. Last thing that I just wanted to mention is H5P. We didn't get, this is a relatively new thing that, and we didn't get to use it in our press books because it wasn't available at the time. But if you get the opportunity to and you're creating a new OER, use H5P, it's interactive, it's really exciting and I'm excited to use it on our next OER that we're working on now. As well as Hypothesis, which is a thing that the students can download so that they can actually annotate and highlight as they're reading the online online component of the textbook. Okay, next slide. Wonderful. So this brings me to my final slide. So I want to thank you. I also want to just mention, although there's a little bit of hesitation sometimes from educators as they're entering this OER field, I find that after you start and working with others, you get excited, you get passionate, and there's really no other word to say, you become addicted to it. So I've worked on one team to create another, and now we're working on two more OERs um, related to the nursing student population. And I'm loving the idea of challenging the status quo and thinking about resources from a student, uh, from a social justice perspective, which was talked about earlier in order to provide students free resources. In addition, part of that social justice component comes from students are involved in creating the OER with you when you get them involved on, the student, on a student advisory committee as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jennifer. What a great story about the development of that resource. Um, I really liked how you linked the notion of pedagogy and the multimedia affordances of uh, OER. And uh, it's clear that you, as with Carrie and David, have put so much effort into evaluating the best resources for learning for your students. Um, I feel like think big, start small should be not just where we should, our, sort of our mantra for creating OER, but but for life, really. Yes. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so uh, all of our speakers are uh, uh, open now to receiving any questions or comments that you have from any of the presentation uh, information that you've heard today. Either type your comments or questions into the chat box and I will recite them for the recording. Or if you're feeling brave, you can come up to the mic and ask them yourselves. So we've got a question from the chat and it's from Sherry and she asks the panel, how do we get access to a link to this video? I suppose that question would be for me. So this question, this video along with all of our other um, OE Week webinars will be available on the YouTube channel by eCampus Ontario and uh, those YouTube channels, or sorry, the, the YouTube channel will be linked uh, from the home page that's on our website that shares all of the different webinars that are happening this week great question any other questions or comments All right, well, while we are waiting for thoughts from our audience, uh, I had a few questions to ask our faculty panelists. Let's, uh, let's start with the first one. And I realized that uh, we started a little late and want to make sure that we respect your time and end in uh, the next few minutes. So maybe we'll just start from the bottom and see how much time we have left. So uh, for David, Carrie, and Jennifer, 
what would what advice would each of you give to faculty who wish to get started with open and that's an open question because that can relate to either building recognition or familiarity supporting finding support and champions for open education in your organizations or advice for the successful creation and adoption of oer sort of a three-in-one question i think one thing um yeah, and I think David, I think you said it. I think uh, yeah, uh, you probably did as well, Carrie. Um, but to go out and check out the open educational resources or repositories, you know, eCampus has one, BC Campus has one, Oregon has one. There's lots of them out there. And just finding out what is available in terms of OERs. And then my second would be collaboration. So start working with, uh, even if you don't know anyone, you, don't, you can still do it, but start working with others that maybe have already developed an OER or just consult them on it or speak with them about it and ask them how they did with it. Um, but you can start just on your own as well, but the collaboration piece will be really important. David, Carrie. I was just going to add, you know, I've noticed that um, since 2016, over the last three years, all of these resources and repositories have grown and gotten better. Um, I would start at eCampus Ontario. Why not, right? There's some great stuff there. Um, also, maybe talk to other faculty about picking a course where you think an open educational resource will um, support the course and where students could save money. In my case, I picked the fundamentals course because I knew students would have to purchase books further down their, their program um, and, and like an accounting course and a marketing course and an HR course and our business fundamentals had a little bit of all of that. And so it made sense for me to make that the focus first for a free book. Um, and so that's what we did. So maybe look at where would you want to have a free resource um, and start with one course and then start looking at eCampus Ontario, see if there's any um, you know, supports there and if not branch out because there's lots of different repositories and they all have different offers, different things in them. I'll uh, throw in my uh, bit too as well, everyone. Um, I'm big on the champions side. I think the key is to get uh, to get a few people. There's faculty everywhere that's kind of jumping in, and, and many have had successes. And it's interesting to talk to them and, and talk about their successes and have them tell their story. And uh, it's amazing how it spreads. And that's kind of the message that Carrie and Jennifer and I have been uh, have been talking about today. Is is once you start, you really get addicted to it, <laughs> and and. Uh, everyone gets involved and, and it's very exciting. And it's a way to connect with other faculty. I really like that piece, right? Connecting with people from all over the world, in fact, um, getting up to date, getting new ways of doing things, new ideas. It's, it's just a very exciting, uh, exciting way to do business. Wonderful, and I think that uh, Wendy on chat uh, echoes your all of your sentiments, um, saying that she got involved because of Jen's enthusiasm and commitment to free resources for students, which which just made sense. And also mentioned if we talk to students, we we recognize that they are very interested in free resources and in helping peers that that come after them, and indeed being part of the OER development process. Uh, Carrie, there's a question in the chat for you about the extent to which you had a team helping with the adoption of, uh, of that textbook. Yeah, um, not at first. So at first, I think I would be what's known as the OER champion. And uh, because I am a program coordinator, I have a little bit of say on what happens in the program. Um, I think for me, it was me wanting to move in that direction so I championed this and then speaking with the three other faculty who also teach the course um, and knowing that one of them was on board right away with me and two of them had you know questions and uh, maybe hesitations and trying to make them feel more at ease with it and getting everyone to move in this direction and I think for me what really did that is when I spoke with the manager and management was all for this um, that helped and then having two out of four on the team all for it helped as well and then um, you know 
I was tasked with revising the course as the lead on it. And I worked with the other three members asking them what they'd like to see. And I sent them links as I searched. Here's a book. Here's a book. What do you think of this one? And I sort of narrowed it down out of the eight that I thought were good, narrowed it down to three and sent them links and said, if you'd like to have a look at these, let me know what you think is missing. Let me know what you think of the quality. What do you think of the currency? And then also to kind of make them feel at ease with this, you know, I will create the PowerPoints to go with it at this point because there wasn't any available three years ago. There are now. Um, I noticed that they updated some instructor resources. So I think that it's moving more in that direction. And the other two faculty, they've been teaching it since I think we implemented it in the fall of 216 or 217. We started in 16, maybe it was 217. Um, so they've been teaching it for two years about and everybody's loving it. So I have heard nothing but good things so far. Yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, it's sounding like you're all having similar stories in, term, in terms of a gradual involvement at the level of unit, program, uh, stakeholder, and institution. So that's wonderful. Um, I'd like to echo our excellent speakers today in um, reminding everyone that if they are interested in getting started with OPEN, they uh, are free and welcome to contact any member of the Campus Ontario team, and we can point uh, you in the direction of uh, a good person to have a conversation with, no matter what it is you're interested in. And I'm hoping, um, nay, expecting that our, uh, our speakers today are open to receiving further uh, comments and, and questions as well. Uh, is that all right, David, Carrie, and Jennifer, if I share your contact information on the slides when we send it out? Absolutely. Great, wonderful. All right, well, a round of applause for, for our speakers today. Thank you so much for the time uh, that you put into your presentation today. If you are interested in hearing more and continuing the conversation about o open education, we have a number of uh, additional webinars this week. You can find more about those uh, webinars by visiting ecampusontario.ca forward slash OE week 2019. Uh, we'll be talking with some students. We'll be talking with some francophones some instructional designers and librarians, and then rounding up the week um, talking about open leadership and institutional strategy. Uh, we've also got a, a range, a wide range, so exciting, of all the other um, uh, activities and initiatives that are being held at various post-secondary institutions across Ontario. And so if you go to tinyurl.com forward slash open ed 2019, you can see some of the work that um, your institution and institutions uh, nearby are doing, some of which are, uh, are open to, to folks because they're online like this one. So uh, let's sign off for now. Again, many thanks to David Simon, Carrie Shields, and Jennifer Lapham for their excellent presentations today. Thank you for taking the time to join us this afternoon, and uh, hopefully we'll see you all later in the week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.